Okay, so my name is Leon Huan, and I'm from Vital Research USA and Oregon State University. Today, I'm very happy to share with you our recent work on linear partition, which is the first linear time algorithm to approximate RNA folding partition function and base pairing probabilities. So we all know that RNAs fold into multiple structures at equilibrium instead of a one single structure. Uh, for example, the, this RNA on the right-hand side folds into at least two different structures, and we know experimentally that the left structure is of less probability than the right structure. So instead of using MFE or minimum free energy folding, which only cares about only one single structure, we wanted to somehow capture the whole ensemble of exponentially many different structures. And to do that, we often used the partition function idea, uh, which is a concept from thermodynamics or statistical mechanics that is the normalization constant Qx that sums over the energy potentials of each individual structure. So this summation is over exponentially many different alternatives. With that, we can compute the Boltzmann probability uh, because this normalization constant Qx defines a distribution and the probability of each individual structure Py is simply the energy potential divided by this normalization constant. And that allows efficient sampling in the ensemble. More, more importantly, we can define marginal probabilities, basically the base pairing probabilities in the whole ensemble, Pij, is the summation of probabilities of the structures that contain that particular pair Ij. So this summation is over exponentially many alternatives as well. So we can see on the uh, base pairing probability matrix plus on the right hand side that these red uh, pairs, which correspond to the right structure, are indeed more probable than these pairs in blue. Okay, and with these base pairing probabilities Pij matrix, we can have much more. We can have more accurate structure predictions via the MEA or maximum expanded accuracy algorithm. And we can also derive heuristic algorithms for pseudonaut predictions. So this is clearly very useful, but it's just very, very slow. The classical algorithm from 30 years ago, McCaskill algorithm, is very much like MAFV folding, like, like the Zucker algorithm. Simply but you simply replace the minimum in MFE by the plus, uh, which you sum over, right? So that's the only difference between the two algorithms. Well, there's another difference that now you need both inside and outside, right? instead of a single inside. So it's, anyhow, it's the same cubic time than a programming algorithm where n is the sequence length. But it's much slower than MFE in practice because of two things. One is the inside and outside, that so you, you are at least two times slower. And secondly, the summation is always much slower than minimization or, part opt or optimization because um, you need to compute in you know, EXP space. Or even if you did in log space, it's still very, very slow. Uh, and as a result, we can see that MFE is like this, and partition function is about 20 times slower on the longest sequences, like 23SR uh, ribosome RNAs. So for those of you who know our previous work, Linear Fold, which we presented here last year, uh, in ISMB 2019, is the first linear time algorithm to approximate MFE folding, RNA folding. It is still n cubic time left to right, uh, it lets you n cubic time in the worst case, but it's a left to right dynamic program instead of bottom up. And just because of this left to rightness, we can use beam search on top of it so that we can, we only care about, you know, the high probables in the part of the search space and ignore the rest. Uh, this would give us a linear time algorithm in practice, but it's unfortunately approximate. But still dynamic programming, meaning it's still considering exponentially many alternatives in linear time. And surprisingly, very interestingly, it has even higher accuracy than the cubic time baselines, even though it's much, much faster. So this work that we're going to present here uses the same idea to partition function. So in, but instead of inside and outside, or bottom up and top down, we do left to right for the inside and right to left for the outside. Right. So the left to right computes the partition function all the way to the end. So if you only care about the partition function, then you can stop here. But if you also want to derive the base pairing probabilities, then you have to go right to left, which is between the top down. And more interestingly, our base pairing probabilities, just like in linear fold, lead to more accurate structure predictions. And we can see that it's indeed linear function is much faster than the baselines. Sometimes three thousand times faster than the baseline in the longest sequence that we can test. 
uh, the, the, in the longer sequence that the baseline can still run on. So why would this ever work, right? Notice that the success of linear partition is actually more surprising than, or more striking than linear fold because summation is much harder than optimization. Because summation is more prone to pruning errors. In summation, you have to care about a lot of structures, a huge number of exponential many structures. You cannot miss like a lot of them, right? Whereas in optimization, you can just miss a lot of them and only care about the top one if you can save the top one. So why would it still work? The intuition is that base pairing probability distributions are still very peaked, or in other words, of low entropy, right? So each pair, each position i actually only has a few or constant number of alternatives that it can pair with. So if we plot you know, the base pairing, pairing probabilities, most of them are close to zero. And a few of them are almost one and a very few in between, right? In fact, of all the n square pairs, or pairing possibilities, the non-zero ones, you know, the, the, the ones uh, that is smaller than like 0 0.001 are just linear, which just shows that the non-zero, the, op, the pairing options for each position i, regardless of how, sequence lasts, how long the sequence is, stays constant. So it's just about five or six different pairing positions that you can try with. It's not going to be that each position i is going to, is possible to pair with everybody. That would be too flat a distribution. And you know, the real distributions are not flat, not that flat at all. So that's why linear partition can capture the probability mass by only considering a small fraction of states. So, and the fact that you know, the non-zero base pairing options are only ON is very interesting because linear partition only computes ON base pairings uh, in the first place. So you know, that means it's a reasonable approximation to start with. And more importantly, like linear fold, linear partition also sums up exponentially many structures in linear time. So even though it's linear time, doesn't mean that it considers only linear number of structures. It still sums up millions or billions of structures. Just that these billions are happen to be the high probable ones in the Boltzmann ensemble. Okay, uh, jumping into the results, we have two versions of linear partition: the V version from linear, linear uh, Vienna fold model and the C version from the country fold model. Both run in linear time and linear space and like 3,000 times faster than Contrafold at you know, a very long length. That is the longest that Contrafold can run. It, but we can run to much, much longer sequence, so like 10,000 or, or 100,000 nuclear times. And to test the quality of our base current probability distribution, we use the concept called ensemble defect, which is a very well-known concept uh, to, to measure the quality of the ensemble. It is basically capturing the average number of incorrectly paired nuclear ties in the ensemble. And if a nuclear tie is said to be correct if it's paired with the correct person, or if it's unpaired in both uh, your prediction and in one truth. So it's not just whether you are paired or not. It's like you have to be paired with, you have to be correctly paired and paired with the same, with the correct person. So on average, uh, 16S and 23S longest uh, families have way more correctly paired nucleotides, like especially 23S has 56, more correctly paired nucleotides. And overall, among all uh, average of all families, you have eight correctly paired, more correctly paired nucleotides than the baseline. And if you look at the pairs, this is the ground truth. And this is the distribution produced by RNA fold. It has a lot of incorrect false positives, long distance false positives in red. And ours recovered the correct ones uh, in blue and has much fewer wrong ones, right? So on average, this particular, for this particular example in group one intron, we have 47 more correctly paired nucleotides or about 9% more. And we produce also a sharper distribution, a lower entropy distribution. And this would lead to higher, pub, higher uh, accuracy structure predictions using the MEA, MEA algorithm. So linear partition V plus MEA is slightly more accurate than RNA fold plus MEA. And this this advantage is more pronounced on the longer families, the 16S and 23S, and the long range base pairs, those more than 500 nucleotides apart. And this also holds for linear folds, linear partition C, by the way. And the approximation quality is also very good. So here we measure the ensemble folding free energy change. That is the free energy of the ensemble, roughly speaking. Um, and it's very close to the baseline and the difference is always about 2% and stays about 2% as sequences gets longer and longer. And also 
the RMSD, the, the deviation of probability between the two distributions, between our distribution and RNA4 distributions are very, very small. On average, uh, it's 0 0.005, very, very small difference. But we notice that random and artificial RNAs have higher RMSDs and have higher errors, but that's also reasonable because they have higher entropy in the distribution and maybe uh, nature actually evolution prefers lower entropy. With larger beam sizes, the approximation errors quickly shrink down to zero and we did not tune the beam size, we just take a whole number of 100, which is good enough in practice. And you, you could also argue that there also exist local folding algorithms like RNAPO fold and R fold, which also run in linear time, but unfortunately they can only consider local pairs within a window limit. And in, in RNAPO fold, the default is 70. So you can only consider pairs of at most seven, 70 nucleotides apart. So you can only consider these guys, whereas you cannot consider any of the long distance pairs, which are more, more important in defining the global structure of the RNA. Right, so you can see a huge difference. Okay, to conclude, linear partition is the first linear time algorithm to approximate RNA folding partition function and base pairing probabilities without any constraints on the parallel. This is the first major speed up uh, in partition function in 30 years. It is orders of magnitude faster, of course, but more importantly, it produces better base pairing probabilities, which can lead into lead to slightly higher accuracies in the downstream structure predictions via the MEA algorithm. So for biologists or practitioners, you would care about the accuracy and you know okay, we can give you better accuracy. And the advantage is always like in the for the more pronounced on harder questions, the longer families and the long range base pairs where current models do very, very badly. And the success of linear partition is actually more striking than the success of linear fold, even though we use the same ideas because summation is harder than optimization. And this is made possible because the base parent distributions are relatively peaked, uh, which has lower entropy. And our algorithm works better on natural RNAs than on random or artificially designed ones because evolution prefers maybe lower entropy but that we don't know, right? Because you know, we found that uh, it works better on natural ones. So with that, I would like to thank you for your attention and please check out our paper and especially the supplementary info for more details of the algorithm, complexity analysis, and way more results. So we have so many more results that we don't have any time to share with you today. And also we build a web server, linearfold.org slash partition, where you can enter any sequence, even very long ones, and we can produce the base pairing probability distributions. And the darker the color, on the higher the probability. You know, those, those, those are dark, uh, high probability, and our code is released on GitHub. With that, I would thank you again for attending.